Hello, I'm Lucas. This is a bit of lead. And I, um, I have done this video three times now. And this is the last time. Uh, I was tagged in the Alphabet Soup book tag. F is for fictionalize by, uh, Sean the Book Maniac. It's my first tag ever. Well, not my first book tag to do. I normally just do them because I want to. But this is the first time I've been tagged. And it's a great honor. A privilege, if you will. Uh, so, I'm gonna do them. I've, like I said, I've spent a tremendous amount of time trying to do this, and I spent a lot of time writing some notes to make sure that I make this quick, and it has not been quick, so I'm just gonna talk really fast. If you can't understand me, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna do the final prompt to tag people first, uh, so that, you know, in case this is long, there's a better chance that the people I tag will see this. Uh, because it'll be at the front, not at the end. Um, F is for far and wide, tag feverishly. I tag four people. Codex Cantina, or I guess that five people then. Codex Cantina is two people. Um, they make great videos that go a little bit more in depth into literature, and uh, they do a little more editing than a lot of, uh, a little more fancy editing, and they have some light graphics here and there, and it's really cool. Um, you should check him out. Everyone who reads it must converse. Uh, he's a great guy. He's really sweet. Uh, he makes good videos, and uh, I enjoy watching him. Uh, and an enthusiastic reader, again, very sweet. Uh, I enjoy her videos. She's great and a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, Tom, the YouTube bot that everyone's been cursed with. I challenge you, buddy. Always saying, oh, you make great video, wonderful content. You want to be YouTube friends? Yeah, I do. But first, you have to do this tag, okay? And if you don't do this tag, we won't be friends. Okay. So, Tom, our friendship is up to you. Number one, F is for fictionalized. There's three parts. I'm going to answer all three. A, take your take on autofiction. I'm not really a fan. I think it's narcissistic. Uh, just write a memoir. B. The writer you'd like to write a novel based on your life. Um, I'm a very shy person. Uh, unless I'm very comfortable with you, or if I get more comfortable in front of the camera, you, I, I'm a lot more reserved and less uh, dramatic and exaggerated in my actions and the way I speak. Uh, other than when I just called out Tom, who should do this tag, if, to prove he's not a bot, <laughs> um, and to prove that we're friends. I, I can be more dramatic than that, anyway, but, uh, so if I was gonna have someone write a book about me in my life, I'd want them to be as dramatic as it can possibly be, and I've read a lot of uh, writers who can be very dramatic, but I don't think there's anyone more dramatic than Edgar Allan Poe. So I want him to write about my life because he's a drama queen, and so am I. <laughs> anyway, uh, see, a work of autobiographical fiction you'd recommend? I think Night by Eli Wiesel counts. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's devastating. It's about his time as a young boy, uh, as a Jew, in Europe, during the Holocaust. Nothing more needs to be said. It's sad. <laughs> it's so sad. Um, I, th I think that actually happened to him. Maybe it's fiction, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's auto-fiction. Anyway, I, sh I should have looked this up. Uh, number two, F is for Farm, a great book set on a farm or about farming or one you want to read. Uh, a Day No Pigs Would Die by Robert Peck. Uh, I think it does a great job of uh, make I read it in middle school. I think I read it in college, too. Um, to for a teaching class that I had to do and write a lesson about it. <clears throat> um, yeah, it makes me feel like I'm on the farm and I felt like I learned a lot about what farm life was like uh, back in the day. Uh, and yeah, I really like that book. Maybe if I reread it now, I would say, oh, it's not that great. But it's pretty good, I think. And Animal Farm by George Orwell, a haunting book. I just feel so bad for Boxer, man. Just my heart and soul. 
Uh, anyway, number three, Frank Franz, Frank Franz or Franny, a writer you recommend or want to read whose first and or last name starts with F. My good friend who introduced me to the celebration of Poetry, Poetry Thursday, which is just his celebration that I only, only I celebrate. Come on, buddy, get with the program. Um, he wanted to be a counselor. He didn't end up doing that. Um, but he really took a lot of uh, notes from Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. So my, my pick would be Viktor Frankl. Um, I've read that book uh, and all about logotherapy. I don't really buy into it. I don't really like it. Uh, but he lived in a different time, you know? Uh, I, I can see where he got that idea because he was a Jew in Europe during World War II. Uh, I think he got out. But his parents didn't. Maybe all of his family except him didn't. Because he was already a doctor, I think. Maybe I'm remembering. Maybe I'm thinking of another Jew writer. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I do like the first half of that book. That's more personal. The second half, from what I remember, is the more clinical aspect of what logotherapy is. Uh, the main thing I remember from it is the Statue of Responsibleness. Not the Statue of Responsibility. I don't know why. Uh, the Statue of Responsibleness that he thinks, uh, because we have the Statue of Liberty on, off of uh, Ellis Island, or off of New York. Uh, and on the other side, we have nothing. But I guess on outside of Seattle, or outside of... Uh, off the coast of Washington, there should be a statue of responsibleness. And it should be responsibility. Come on, dude. Um, and there's no need to build that. <laughs> but, you know, he explains it in his book better than me complaining will. Um, let's see. Number five. F is for find a book with a lot of Fs in the title. Uh, oh, number four. F is for the love of God, an experience of extreme exasperation while... Reading in its in, uh, book in its entirety or a smaller section, I have three answers for this. Uh, one of disappointment, and that would be Foundation by Isaac Asimov. The first chapter is incredible. It is easily the best thing I've ever read, in my opinion, uh, at least in science fiction. Um, it, it does so much for me. It, it just, everything, just all the synapses fire off. It's really cool. I'm shaking. Uh, and my thumb is in front of the camera now. Um, that's okay. Uh, but everything after the first chapter, all the other books just thoroughly disappoint me. And they don't do anything close to what the first chapter does for me. Uh, one of shock and fear and horror would be 1984. Uh, we are the dead. We are the dead. You are the dead. <laughs> Scared me. Um... Uh, when Julie and Winston are in the top of the shop uh, and they're talking to each other after making love, uh, waking up and making love. Um, yeah, it, it, that moment in particular in 1984 made me throw the book to the other side of the room. It's the only time I've ever been scared by a book uh, because I was not expecting that at all. I thought that they would make a change and no, <laughs> um, no. And it got worse from there, and, you know, Room 101 is all terrible, but that moment changed politics for me, it changed reading for me, it changed me. Uh, so, yeah. But one, an exasperation, an exasperation of uh, anger would be from John Meacham's Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power, uh, when Thomas Jefferson has brought Sally Hemings, and I think one of their children, uh, Sally Hemings being his slave, um, she, she was in France with him. Maybe I'm remembering this all wrong now that I think about it, but I'm going to tell it like I remember it and you can tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, she was in France. There's no slavery in France. Slaves that happen to be there can apply to like be refugees, basically. Uh, Sally wants to do that. Uh, maybe their child was actually, or more of their children, or Maybe they only had one child at that time. I don't know. Uh, Thomas says, no, you can't do that. I'll, I'll let your child free once he's an adult. 
Um, anyway, she has a chance to be free uh, with her kid, who I think is there with them. And John Meacham points our concerns to how Thomas Jefferson would feel about Sally Hemings doing that. And I just think, why, why are you doing this? I do not care what Thomas Jefferson thinks about his slave wanting to be free. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is that she should be free, and she wasn't. The rest of the book is fine. I, I despise that part so much. It's so wrong-footed and stupid. And uh, I've gotten worked up all three times that I've said that. Um, number six, F is for Father, a work of fiction in which fatherhood is a central concern. Uh, a Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, which is a play that debuted in 1959, I think. Um, it's about this black family that comes into quite a bit of money. And uh, the mother wants to use it to buy a nice house. And the father, I'm forgetting what he wants to use it for, but uh, he ends up giving it away. Because uh, somebody like absconds with it, they they take it, uh, and they're not getting it back, um, which is devastating for the family because they want the mother wanted to get a nice house that happens to be a white neighborhood. The white people are not thrilled about that, uh, and they offer a sort of like a buyout, uh, which Walter, the father, is happy to accept. Uh, and the drama and tension of it all and the themes revolve around Walter's decision. Uh, and that's why I chose this, uh, because of that in particular, because I think Walter is the central character and, he, you know, he's got to make a choice for his family. Um, if he's going to take the money uh, and sort of provide for them, or if he's going to stand up for them and their black pride and their culture and all that stuff. And it is an incredible play. Uh, maybe I'm getting some details wrong. It's been a long time, but it, it's amazing. <laughs> um, uh, also, I guess you could say The Pearl by John Steinbeck. Um, you know, I, I'm forgetting the main character's name, but he wants to help his sick son. Uh, and he has this pearl and he becomes obsessed with it and thinks it's going to save him and his family and uh, he goes mad. <laughs> and it's... John Steinbeck is one of my favorite writers. Uh, so any chance I can plug him? Yeah. Number seven. F is for Finland, a book set in or by a Finnish author you recommend or would like to try. Uh, the Kalevala, I hope I said that right. Uh, by, I don't know who, uh, but I know that it influenced uh, J.R.R. Tolkien very much because there's, from what I know, there's a ring in there and I'm sure you can imagine it's a powerful ring, I think, or just a ring that has great importance in some way. Um, so, you know, Lord of the Rings. I'd like, I'd like to read something that influenced Lord of the Rings. Uh, and it's a Finnish epic poem, from what I understand. And I've got a Finnish friend, she says, cool, so, you know, cool. Number eight, F is for Fangirl, a new or new to you writer you're excited about. Uh, I read Raising Steam by Terry Pratchett at the end of last year, which is really fun. It's, it centers around uh, Moist von Litwig. Uh, who has to take charge when locomotives are introduced to Discworld. And it is a hoot and a holler, and it's just wild. It is crazy, because they have to decide what to do and where, where, what to do with them and where should they go and all this other stuff. And there's all these crazy, crazy characters. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was his, almost, his penultimate book, um... While I did enjoy it, I did sort of feel like it got out of control at times. N not to say, uh, like, it felt like the narrative threads were a little loose. I was expecting them to be tighter, but uh, 
given that it was one of his last books, I know he had Alzheimer's, maybe that had some effect. I don't know. It was still a wonderful book. I would read it again. Uh, but yeah, um, had good fun with that book. I look forward to reading more of his books. I have Nation, which is not part of Discworld, but uh, I want to read that book by him next, so I think I will. Okay, two more. Uh, number nine, F is for Fling. You loved one book by this writer, but nothing else. Uh, Ernest Hemingway, A Farewell to Arms. Uh, I really love that book. It's about this American man and the ambulance squad. He's a lieutenant during World War I um, in the Italian campaign. And it's just so heartbreaking <laughs> and moving and touching. And it is not without flaws, but it is the only book that I did not think Wow, Hemingway, you are so immature. All you can talk about is sex and men's virility and masculinity and men's virility in their masculinity and men's masculinity in their virility. I, I, uh, there are good things I like about his writing. Uh, I, I do like how he can say a lot in so few words, uh, but he actually doesn't say a lot. He says the same thing over and 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 over again, and I can't stand him. I mean, his dialogue is fine, it's good. It's just, he says this, he talks about his themes are the same, and I'm not interested in Men being emasculated and how terrible that is. Okay, I've read it once by you. I don't need to read it 16 more times, okay? Thank you. Number 10, F is for Friends, a novel that satisfyingly explores friendship. Uh, Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck. I suppose you could go with Of Mice and Men by him too, but I don't think, I, I, I mean, it has friends in it, but I don't think it, explores friendship. I think it explores other themes, um, and friendship is one of them, you know, with George and Lenny and all the things they go through, but I, I, I think there are other themes that are at the forefront of that book, but Tortilla Flat is kind of like a day in the life of all these friends in, um, post-World War One. um, is this, a, not Salinas, I think it's Monterey. I think that's where he's from. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there are these like jobless kind of <laughs> ne'er-do-wells uh, that are sort of referenced as the uh, Knights of the Round in King Arthur. And yeah, it's like a weird day in the life of these Mexican, Spanish, Indian, American kids right after the war, World War I, uh, the Great War, and it's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> um, much like a lot of his other books, uh, for me it's one of his most interesting because it, I mean, I guess another book I've read that's like it is Cannery Row. But it, it feels so loose, but there is a sort of through line that is really nice to see. That's, anyway, I recommend that book. It's, it's, I really like that book a lot. Um, it's hard for me to talk about why, because I will just, oh, 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 it's so good. <laughs> But I really like uh, Danny and all his friends. Anyway, I'm looking at my list of things again. We're at 20 minutes. This video has gone on way too long. But um, like I said, Codex Cantina, looking forward to your video. Everyone who reads it must converse, looking forward to your video. An enthusiastic reader, I'm looking forward to your video. Most importantly, I'm looking for that dreaded demon, Tom, the YouTube bot, 
who says all videos are great and wants to be YouTube friends. Well, Mr. Bot, please prove yourself as my friend by doing this tag. And anybody else who watches this, thank you. Bye.